This is Twit. Just got a uh, recall. My wife drives a Chevy Bolt electric vehicle. And uh, Chevy, <laughs> it's going to cost them, they say, $1.8 billion is getting them all back and replacing the batteries. I guess they had a problem with the batteries. Uh, you know, I think two, there were two car fires out of, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 cars, maybe more. Um, but, you know, good for them. They're, they're being responsible. They're replacing the batteries. So uh, for now, we, uh, we can't charge it up all the way. You don't generally with electric vehicles anyway. You charge it to 90% usually, unless you know you're going farther. And we don't, most importantly, discharge it all the way. They're trying to kind of narrow the range of charge and discharge. And then, <laughs> this is the scary part, they say, oh, it probably only should charge during the day while you can keep an eye on it in case it bursts into flames. And immediately after charging, park it outside away from the house. <laughs> that's scary um, I, you know I'm going to point out this would be a good time to point out that anything that can uh, hold enough juice to move a two ton vehicle down the road at 70 miles an hour that's a lot of energy is going to have a ton of energy in there and almost every technology has the capability of explosively releasing that energy <laughs> gasoline have you ever heard of a car fire oh yeah a few of those. Hardly a movie goes by without a car exploding. We don't go, oh, I'm never driving one of those again. Those things is dangerous. <laughs> uh, hydrogen? Sure. Sure, there's hydrogen vehicles. Toyota makes some others, do. There's hydrogen trucks. Uh, remember the Hindenburg? Yeah, hydrogen. But, again, uh, I actually asked our car guy, Sam Abil Samad, about that. And he said, those tanks that Toyota's putting on the Mirai and other hydrogen vehicles, those tanks, you could explode a nuclear bomb next to them. They wouldn't, well, I doubt that's true. But, you know, they're, they're pretty puncture resilient. But, you know, if you've got a smartphone, you, we've all seen the videos, <laughs> usually hysterical, of a smartphone bursting into flame in somebody's pocket. Something to be aware of. Lithium-ion batteries uh, store a lot of energy in a small space. And if that energy is released quickly, it could, you know, cause a surprise. Hello. Even a fire. So we'll be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be driving that car a little more judiciously until we can get that replaced. Nevertheless, I have to say, I've driven, uh, we, I had a Tesla, I have a... Ford Electric now, I, uh, we've driven the, we have the Bolt. I like electric vehicles, and I'm not going to, this is not going to sway me from uh, continuing to buy them. I like driving them. None of them have burst into flames yet, <laughs> as, far as, as, I, as far as I know. So, okay. Okay. Just thought I'd mention that. Do not get overexcited about, speaking of Tesla's, Elon Musk's bot. Elon Musk said that Tesla is going to produce a new humanoid robot in the near future. He says, our cars are semi-sentient robots on wheels. It kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. We're also quite good at sensors and batteries and actuators. So we think we'll probably have a prototype sometime next year that basically looks like this. And then a human dancer in a robot suit came out and capered around to dubstep music. <laughs> it's probably just a coincidence that at the same time as Elon is announcing this dancing robot, federal investigators are looking... <laughs> at the autopilot on Teslas and their tendency to crash into parked emergency vehicles. Don't pay no attention to that, says Elon. Look at the person in the suit dancing. It's a robot. Tesla's promised a lot of things. Elon has promised a lot of things. I'm not going to be too worried about uh, the Tesla robot next year. There's a company, I don't know if you've seen the video, Boston Dynamics, which has gone through quite, quite a few owners. Google had them for a while, then realized, you know, probably not the best PR for a company people already think maybe knows too much about us and maybe is a little bit creepy to own robots <laughs> that uh, look like Terminators. Probably not 
a good look, so we're going to sell this company. They have been, Boston Dynamics, they have a dog that's quite impressive, Spot, the robotic dog, scary as heck, but impressive. And they've been working on humanoid robots, the kind Elon wants to build next year. For 10 years, they still fall over a lot. Although there's a great video, I don't know if you've seen the video, of the Boston Dynamics human, humanoid robot doing parkour. <laughs> you know, that's that thing where you jump around, climb up buildings and stuff. Pretty impressive. They don't mention how many takes they had. They, it took more than one take to do that. Anyway, we'll see. Elon's just, you know, Elon's Elon. Everybody who everybody who follows him. Yeah, I, I, for a long time, I thought, oh, my gosh, this guy is is the, uh, you know, is the real-life version of Stark Industries, you know? I mean, <laughs> he's, uh, this guy's got it going on. And then I realized, you know, he's also got some quirks. He's a little different. I wonder if it's the case, it seems to be, that in order to be a technology startup founder, you have to be a little cuckoo. I was just reading an article about uh, Tim Cook, the current CEO of Apple, and one of the formal Apple execs said, it's kind of quiet and dull around here with Tim. It was so much more exciting when Steve <laughs> Steve Jobs was uh, running the company. Yeah, yeah, because Steve would fire you at the drop of a hat. It was definitely exciting <laughs> in the same way you know, uh, walking over a snake pit would be exciting. Uh, but it seems to be a lot of these guys are kind of, kind of wild, kind of wild. Even Jeff Bezos and Larry Page of Google, and they're all kind of, they. Uh, you have to. Be, I think you have to be to think. I, me, can change the world. I'm going to change the world. And uh, and you can't stop me. And uh, even if people. Don't get it and think I'm crazy. Uh, I'm going to change the world. Steve had a great quote about changing the world, actually, that I, I really liked. He said uh, um, it happened to him uh, at some point as a kid. He realized that the world around him wasn't created by people any smarter than he is. And that, in fact, he could do anything he wanted. Oh, there's the there's the giant leap, isn't it? <laughs> he could he could invent anything he wanted, do anything he wanted, because the world, the way it is, is just constructed by other people. He says, life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact: everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. I'll tell you the secret. I've met Steve Jobs. I know a little bit about him. He's not thinking no smarter than you. He's thinking dumber than he is, just between you and me. He did, you know, he softened it up a little bit. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were dumber than you. Well, no smarter than you. And, and this is the important thing, you can change it. You can influence it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. In, you know, in medical textbooks, they call that megalomania. <laughs> um, but, but you know, I, you kind of have to have a little bit of that to, to change the world, I think. And to say, you know what, I've got a better idea. My idea is so good, I'm going to move heaven and earth. I don't care who gets in my way to make it happen. Elon Musk, perfect example. It's, it's just, I, I've, as somebody who's on the sidelines watching this circus we call tech happen, I just find this all quite interesting, quite fascinating.